Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 6. My dad thinks that it's kind of a waste of money, but he doesn't really get the process of anything, really. <laughs> They're wildly popular, sold everywhere you turn, and no doubt either your kids or their friends have one. Fidget spinners seem to be all the rage. In some FM area schools, they've been at times a distraction in the classroom, and some have taken steps to limit them in school. But there's also a new study out saying that these toys are among the most dangerous things your kids can have this summer. Valley News Team's Bradford Eric takes a look at this spinning debate. They're flashy, they're fancy, and some even play music. Fidget spinners are everywhere. They do. All of the friends have them. She has a couple of them, but she seems to lose them. So. I only have one. Oh, she has one. Sorry. But mom, you're not cool until you have a fidget spinner. Right. I guess you have to have multiple to be super cool. <laughs> and according to this study, they're extremely dangerous. Yeah, like the heavier, like pointy ones that are metal, you could. Like if you just spun it and then you like could scrape yourself if I you didn't know. I just never try uh, like one that people create because some people just create one that had like knives on it. But kids and adults agreeing on something? Believe it. They both say spinning can be dangerous. I just heard on the news about like the little um, piece in the center that can come out and they can choke on them. It's not just our kids who are interested in fidget spinners. Adults might be able to benefit, and there's some evidence that folks with attention disorders could benefit too. Experts argue those benefits might only be anecdotal stories from customers, but those who sell fidget spinners say the evidence is there. I, I get lots of customers, uh, their kids like that perfect, and they, they tell me they hope that stuff helped them a lot and they came and buy more. Whether you believe it's a tool or you believe it's a toy, the fad is fidget spinning. Bradford Eric, Valley News Live. There are a number of other popular toys that made that list of dangerous toys for the summer, including hoverboards and lithium batteries because of their potential to burn people. A hoverboard caught fire while it was charging last night and left a Florida family of 10 displaced. The lithium ion battery packs in the self-balancing scooters can overheat posing a risk of fire or explosion. And high-powered water guns and other toys that take aim can lead to serious eye injuries. Many toy gun products are often sold with inadequate or no warnings and without protective eye gear. We have posted a link to a list of dangerous summer toys on our website, valleynewslive.com. And tell us what you think about some of these potentially dangerous toys. You can join the conversation on Facebook. Just search Valley News Live, like our page, and you can follow the latest news, weather, and breaking news anytime on your feed. A special meeting tomorrow morning will decide West Fargo's new police chief. A recommendation is expected, followed by discussion and then the appointment. North Dakota Highway Lieutenant, uh, Patrol Lieutenant Troy Hisher and FBI Supervisory Special Agent Heath Jonke are the two finalists for the job. Meanwhile, some clouds overhead. It was windy today. For those of you with outdoor plans tonight, let's check in with Hutch to find out about the weather. Hutch? We'll need to continue to hold on to the hats this evening as the gusts continue to ride over 20 miles per hour, even 30 miles per hour. The strongest winds today found in the far northern valley. Cooler air spilling in from the north and west. We're 16 degrees cooler this hour than 24 hours ago in Williston and it will continue to cool on. Wind advisory for the western counties until 10 o'clock, but the gusty winds will continue overnight. Temperatures, well, they're going to be falling. That little blue line is a cold front. It's heading into the valley as we close out our work week. I'll have details on how this impacts your weekend, and we'll talk about how long the cold air, once it's here, decides to stick around. Look forward to that. Thanks. The Stutzman County Sheriff's Office is looking for a man wanted for outstanding drug charges. 57-year-old James Storley is wanted for possession with intent to deliver and has warrants for drug paraphernalia and driving with a suspended driver's license. Authorities say he may also be in possession of a firearm. Storley is 6 feet 4 inches tall, weighs 200 pounds. He has a slender build, hazel eyes and graying hair. The department reports he is also homeless and is likely living in a car. If you see Storley or have any information that would lead to his arrest, Call 252-1000. A home invasion to report tonight. It involved a woman sleeping with her two small children and a stranger who broke into the bedroom and grabbed them by the throat. It happened in an apartment complex just west of the Columbia Overpass in Grand Forks. 
23-year-old Sanjay Yaka was arrested and charged with two counts of aggravated assault and criminal trespass. The family says they think he broke through a screened window on the deck and made his way in through an open sliding door. The mother says she thought she was going to die and was trying to protect her children. He was acting kind of like a rape and just pulling my leg and he just pulled like close to him and I just pull, push him out and I just, I just save my kids and he starts shouting in front of the window like help, help. Valley News Live spoke with Yaka's father. He did not want his face shown, but he says his son was delirious and not fully aware what was going on. He says Yaka me is mentally sick and should be treated instead of criminally charged. In the month of June, the West Fargo Fire Department has already been called out to 36 fires. That's as many as they had to deal with last year. A construction dumpster went up in flames today, the latest case, damaging the siding to the recently built house. No one lives there yet, but there were workers inside who were able to make it out okay. There's no word yet on the cause of the fire. Undetermined, that's what West Fargo fire investigators tell us surrounding the cause of a home fire earlier this month. The fire was on June 1st. It started outside a wood pile in the backyard. Neighbors and first responders were able to run in, save family pets at the home. The house was totaled. We now know what caused a fire inside a West Fargo auto body shop earlier this month. The West Fargo fire chief tells Valley News Live it was a hot drill bit. Employees were getting a car ready for salvage when a piece of hot metal fell into a gas tank and ignited. Hazardous materials were there but have since been cleaned up. We're told at least three vehicles caught fire inside JWD Auto back on June 9th, with a blaze spreading to the second floor of the structure before crews could get a handle on it. Investigators are trying to find out if alcohol or drugs played a factor in a man being struck by a train early this morning. It happened about 2.30 between North Broadway and Roberts Street near the Empire Tavern in downtown Fargo. Witnesses say the man walked past a crossing arm and stood on the tracks with his arms up. As one man might expect, one might expect injuries were said to be significant. He was conscious when he was taken by ambulance to the hospital. His name has not been released. Today was the 10th annual celebration of Gobble It Up for United Way, an event that donates to help those in need in our community. All seven Hornbacher's locations participated in today's event. For just five bucks, you could get a sandwich, chips, and a soda. The money will be used to help reduce hunger and homelessness in the community, as well as to donate supplies to the backpack program. Last year, they raised over $27,000. This year, the goal is $30,000. For months, you've been driving by and watching the progress on construction of the Valley's newest medical facility. Today, you got a chance to tour it. We'll take you inside later on Valley News Live at 6. As we go through the next 24 hours, some cool Canadian air will settle into the valley as we will not escape that through the weekend. All details on that and a chance of showers in your forecast coming up next.